With over 7 million people, the Bay Area is the second largest metropolitan region west of the Mississippi River. Major shipping ports, a thriving business community, and a booming tourism industry attract many visitors to the Bay Area from all over the world. With all of these people and goods coming and going, transportation is a big deal. Hi, I'm Joey Mendez from the Caltrans Office of Environmental Engineering in District 4. Of the five major commuter bridges around the Bay Area, the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge is by far the most heavily traveled. Nearly 280,000 vehicles cross it each day. After the Loma Prieta earthquake, department and regional officials elected to replace the existing bridge with a new seismically safe eastern span of the Bay Bridge. As you can see, the new bridge is taking shape behind me. Now, let's take a look at what's happening below the surface of the water. This video will outline some of the efforts being made by Caltrans to safeguard the environment during construction of the new bridge. The fragile ecosystem of the San Francisco Bay requires some careful planning during a project of this scale. During the planning phase, an extensive environmental impact statement was prepared, which assessed the potential environmental impacts of constructing the new bridge and alternatives to avoid or mitigate these impacts. This process includes input from a number of environmental resource agencies. The National Marine Fisheries Service, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission, and Regional Water Quality Control Board, to name a few. These agencies oversee project compliance with various environmental laws, such as the Clean Water Act and the Endangered Species Act, by issuing permits authorizing the project under specified conditions. In preserving the environment, water quality comes in at the top of the list. Pile driving, dredging, and pile cleanout are all construction activities that may compromise the water quality in the bay. Water quality is a concern for several important reasons. One reason is wildlife. The bay waters are home to a diverse community of wildlife. Water conditions are extremely important to birds, fish, and marine mammals. Even the slightest change in aquatic conditions can have negative impact. Another important reason for maintaining water quality here in the Bay Waters is a plant called eelgrass. Eelgrass is recognized by the National Marine Fisheries Service as being part of an essential fish habitat, meaning fish live and spawn in it. If sunlight is blocked from reaching these eelgrass beds because of muddy or turbid water stirred up by the construction, the eelgrass could die and possibly affect the ecosystem. To better understand exactly why so much attention has been paid to this marine plant, we talked with Caltrans biologist Melissa Barrow. Eelgrass is important to the food chain because several species of birds, including ducks and geese, actually eat the blades of grass. And herring, which are commercially important fish, use the blades of grass to lay their eggs on. And herring are important because they are a food source for salmon and cod, as well as marine mammals such as harbor seals and sea lions. Now that we have a better understanding about why monitoring water quality is so important, let's take a look at how we here in environmental engineering are achieving that. We took a ride on the Hukiwana, a monitoring vessel operated by George Tate and July Coons of Sea Engineering, a consulting firm brought on board by the Office of Environmental Engineering to monitor water quality during day-to-day -day construction operations. Their strategy is simple. 
First, they determine which direction the water is moving, usually by observing whether there is an incoming or outgoing tide. Then stations are established around the perimeter of the job site. All stations that are upstream from the site are used for establishing background levels, which are the conditions existing in the water in its natural state. The data collected from these stations are compared to the data taken from the downstream stations. In this way, it is possible to evaluate what effect the bridge construction is having on the water below. The Regional Water Quality Control Board set the allowable changes in water quality before construction began. For example, the turbidity of the water around the bridge construction is allowed to increase to 50 nephilometric turbidity units, NTU, or 10% over the background level if background is greater than 50 NTU. NTUs are a standard measure of light scatter in water due to suspended particles. A monitoring frequency of every two hours was established as a workable period that would minimize extended impacts to water quality. If the monitoring detects a condition that is not within the allowable limit, the measurement would be confirmed and the monitoring frequency changed to every hour until the water quality returns to an acceptable condition. Sea Engineering would inform the Caltrans inspector of the condition, who would then work with the construction contractor to fix the problem as soon as possible. Having to monitor each station every two hours keeps the crew of the Hukiwana very busy while providing environmental engineering with some of the most intensive monitoring data for the San Francisco Bay waters ever. We use commercial um, industrial water quality monitoring equipment to conduct our operations here on site. In this case, it's a YSI multi-sond. Uh, multi-sond because it uh, can monitor a number of different water quality constituents uh, at one time. In this case, uh, turbidity, uh, dissolved oxygen, salinity, temperature, pH, and depth. Uh, uh, because we can measure depth uh, um, along with other constituents, we can tell exactly where in the water column uh, we find, uh, find changes in each of these constituents. Uh, if there's an effect from construction activity, we can identify exactly where the effect is and helps us uh, determine where, uh, where the effect is coming from and how to mitigate it. Um, at the end of the day, these data are, are uh, collected in, in uh, QC on computer, uh, and they're posted on the web and sent off to Caltrans. Each month, a report documenting the monitoring results, any adverse conditions detected, and any actions taken by Caltrans to correct the condition is submitted to the Regional Water Quality Control Board for review. This allows them to evaluate the effectiveness of the adopted water quality standards and determine if any additional changes to the construction methods are needed. During almost three years of construction, there have been less than a dozen occasions when the turbidity of the bay water exceeded the limits set for the project. Most of these were related to the pile cleanout activity. The contractor was able to modify the flow rate of water within the system to reduce the concentration of particles discharged to the bay, which results in lower turbidity measurements. The Office of Environmental Engineering is a proud team member at Caltrans. Industry standards are often born at Caltrans, and the Office of Environmental Engineering is dedicated to following this trend. For the California Department of Transportation, I'm Joey Mendez. Thanks for watching.